Hi, I'm Michael Sink. I'm the author of Rock and Sand, a practical insight to business growth. And I'm with you today to review the rock and sand model and explain it to you. And here's a picture of the finished product of the model. And what I'm gonna do is walk you through the steps you need to take to one, understand the model, and then follow the model so that you can create a strategic plan that will unleash the growth in your company. So step number one, or the core to the rock and sand model, I'm gonna draw out for you right here. This is your business, this hole. And where you are right now is at the bottom of the hole. Where you wanna be is in the future, is at the top of the hole. And you're working your way out of this hole. Now at the top of the hole, there is all around the hole, sand. Sand is all the transactional items of your business, the products you make, you sell, you invoice for, you collect money for, all the things that you do that generate invoices that generate income. And most businesses are, who are succeeding or are in existence get pretty good at moving the sand in their business because if they don't, they run out of money. So what happens is the company works really hard and the whole, everyone in the team pushing sand into the hole, okay? And it starts piling up and you start getting closer and closer to where you wanna be in the future. Now, that's pretty good, but there's other things at the top of the hole. There are rocks and rocks are major projects initiatives, um, jobs and complex things that need to be worked on together that if accomplished, allows you to move more sand with the same amount of resources or you know, grow exponentially. So the company needs to find a rock to push it, that the senior management or the management can push in the hole while they're pushing sand into the hole and the net effect is same amount of effort, they get a lot closer to the top of the hole. Rocks can be things like a new software program, a new product line developed, a marketing campaign, retraining your salespeople to be more effective. It's all kinds of things. Sand, these are the things you're doing to generate money. That is step number one. Here's the next thing you do. So the question really is, how do you pick the rocks? Because there's hundreds of them. How do you know you get the right one? And then you've got to pick another one and another one. So the next step, or step number two, is figuring out your cores for your business. And these are planning sessions and work that you need to do in deep conversation to determine the cores of your business. The first thing is, what is the purpose of your business? Why do you exist? The second thing is, what are the values that you expect the people of your organization to live by? The things that you would hire people for and reward people for, the things you would fire people for because they're not living to the values that you believe in your company. The next thing you really have to examine who your core customers actually are and not the businesses but the people at those customers that are making the buying decisions. After you figure out the core customers then you can figure out a brand promise which is the promise you're making to your customers that makes them want to buy from you. Makes them take your phone call, makes them get engaged with you and finally you need to examine and define what your strengths are because you have to build your business on your strengths not your weaknesses you build from your strengths to get around your weaknesses that's step two you've got to define all these things and these are lengthy deep conversations that's step two step three is after you figured out your cores that are listed right here you've got to figure out what the vision is based on those cores where are you gonna be down the road if you do this successfully? 
it's kind of like playing, let's pretend. Let's pretend we've done this very successfully in the course. Where are we going to be? Where are you going to be 10 years out? Which is a BHAG. Big, hairy, audacious goal. Second, come back from the future to a 3HAG. Somewhat same initials, but that's three years out. Three years, highly achievable goal. And with that, what are the main things you're going to have to work on that are going to be different that allow you to get there? Next, you've got to come back to the year right in front of you, one year out, and set priorities on how to get the thrusts accomplished. And finally, you've got to sit down and say, there's 90 days. What's the next 90 days going to look like? And that is how you select the rock. And that rock goes into the hole. That's step number three. Finally, there's a fourth step. You've got this all figured out. You've got this documented in your strategic plan. But then you've got to start talking about it. The final part is you've got to have regular productive conversations about how to move the rocks. What that's called is meeting rhythm. And that means regular meetings where you talk about how well you're doing. Every quarter, you need to have a meeting to talk about what the next rock's going to be, to debrief how you did with the existing rocks and how the sand turned out that quarter. You need to have a monthly meeting where your team gets together and says, okay, on the rock we're working on right now, is it working? Is it not working? We need to make changes. Oh, we don't need to make changes. We just need to keep doing. Maybe you might even decide that you picked the wrong rock. But you, monthly, about four weeks in, you have enough information to know whether it's working or not. After that, you got to drill down to actually having weekly meetings where once a week the team comes together by, um, and says, how are we doing on the rock this week? What are we going to do this week to move the rock? How did last week go? Review your numbers. Anything else? Solve problems. Finally, you have to have daily conversations or daily huddles. Five to ten minute meetings every day where the team talks about what's the main thing they got to get done today and inform each other so that people can move fast and make good decisions faster and better. This is the final step. You don't do the conversations. If you try to do the conversations without a plan, it's going to be good, but you got to have a plan. But if you have a plan without the conversations, you're not going to move the rocks. And that is the rock and sand model.